Black Oni. You're now listening to the Black Oni Podcast. is actually starting with the black bunny podcast i'm very excited to be back here doing the damn thing before we go on to explaining my own excitement expressing that i want to ask my guests here to introduce themselves so we'll start on my right over here with the audio lover tell us who you are what it is you do what you're up to what's up what's up what's up everybody y'all that's right, I'm the audio lover. Uh, basically, I just um, play games. I also uh, help build cities and a um, whole bunch of other things like that, really. Um, what I've been up to is just uh, trying to get back in school and uh, take these classes. So that's it. That's what's up. What are you, uh, what are you going to school for? Um, right now, I'm doing um, a certificate, a professional certificate program for... Um, geographical information systems basically um mapping map analysis things like that nice nice all right uh and dream manifested yo what's good y'all y'all know already know who it is this is your boy dream manifested where we manifest your dreams hey lightly hey gotta put that smooth voice on real quick <laughs> 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 Streamer extraordinaire, but not really because we're getting there. Hey, but that rhyme though, because we do rhyme all the time in there, right? Audio lover, we working on stuff, <laughs> huh? That this is hey, hey, you're supposed to just roll with me right now. All right, bust me out later. <laughs> so, just been getting back to this consistent streaming thing, you know, okay. it's rough. We got so we got we got music cooking and uh, working on photography and such. So, that's what we're doing now. Hey, I love it. So, uh Obviously, you can see the links right there for their mm-hmm. names. Uh, you can check them out on both Twitch and Twitter. That's where you can find them. They also have links to all other stuff on there. So make sure you all are following each and every one of these gentlemen I have on here with me. We did. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Uh, that's the, the perk of being on the show is that you get to do some self-promote and get some more people invested in what it is you do. And that's one of the things I love about doing this podcast is that it gives the guests an opportunity to to reach more people than they may have been able to before. So. Uh, with that said, uh, yeah, go follow each and every one of them. They're awesome people just in general, let alone their content creation, you know, music going on, poetry, you know, streaming, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, for those of you who don't know, for whatever reason, you're watching the Black Money Podcast. And I actually want to take a second real quick just to explain what the Black Money Podcast is in a way, because uh, I started my gaming career as like J Blaze 06. And so Black Money Podcast was supposed to be like, part of the company podcast type of thing, but then I became known as black owners and then the name never changed. So it's not me being pretentious. Like, Oh, this is my podcast. It's, you know, it's this whole thing. So uh, whether or not we continue calling it the black only podcast or not, will depend on a number of factors, but this is a gaming podcast where we bring you gaming news uh, analysis. We give you our own thoughts and impressions on the things that are happening in the industry and ways that we can move the industry forward by talking about it, by having conversation and discourse and all that good stuff and i like to have a number of different types of uh people on the show uh chris it's yoru was not able to make it he wasn't able to get someone to cover his shift he works on sundays usually so uh we had to kind of scramble to get a few things done and the 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 video the audio all of it the whole podcast is running a lot later than it was supposed to because of some technical difficulties that i had to deal with (laughs) say it again (laughs) You ain't gonna talk about that right now, but it's all good. Yeah, we here. We here. We in this. You know, I'm. As long I'm as everything comes together. That's right. That's right. We find. We got there, and that's all that matters. Got there exactly. Uh, the last time y'all saw Dream manifested on his show, he did not have nearly as much hair as he did. Well, he, he had cut it, and then he didn't cut it, and he started growing it out again. Right. It's been a while yes. since we had a cast, so uh, it's been a long while. <clears throat> it was all a dream manifest. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, so as y'all see, uh, the episode is called Hiatus. What's that? And we are going to jump right into our icebreaker. I'm actually going to hold on. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to do an actual. I icebreaker. Icebreaker. Yes. <laughs> you can actually do that now. <laughs> That's right. Like that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. The icebreaker of today is what has been your biggest accomplishment since last year? I think that was the last time there was a podcast. Interesting. Wasn't ready for that. Go? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. All right. So um, my biggest accomplishment um, has actually been entering this uh, GIS certificate program as well as um, actually starting my own YouTube channel. Um, finally, uh, this year I did it. Um, I haven't posted in the last two weeks only because of how school is really pushing on me right now. But um, I promise I'm going to get you more content soon. Um, my first stream, my first uh, actual series is uh, the Roundaway Futurist. Basically, it's uh, talking about all futuristic things that's happening with policies, technology, AI, robots, all that in between. Um, and uh, been able to make some more music. Um, got got a couple of people listening to it. Um, Dream actually uh, is, is working on some stuff with me. So we'll see how everything goes. Love it. Love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doing all kinds of stuff over there, shine, and I see. <laughs> what about you, Dream? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> just the normal stuff. I wake up in the morning. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of that going on since last time we did a podcast. No, nah, but uh, for real, though, uh, just moving back. Since last time we did a podcast, uh, I have moved back out on my own. You know, I recently just moved back to Georgia at that time. Um, so being that I am back out on my own, I've been able to create some of a setup, a desk setup to get back to streaming. Um in terms of uh, photography and videography and music, all of that now for me has kind of been um, combined into one thing. So most of the avenues that I would have that was really just my musical ends have also turned into uh, opportunities to take photographs and get better at that craft as well. So plenty of those things will be popping up to the forefront here very shortly, especially now that I've gone legit with my Adobe products and I can edit my raw files now. Oh, I yeah. mean, what? Who said that? I mean, he's always been, he's always been legit. <laughs> oh, what? That's crazy. Hey, the, the, the statute of limitations, baby. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, though. Yes, sir. And what about you? What have you been doing since the last time we cast? It? Man, Bes listen. Besides being famous, I'm not famous. You better stop that <laughs> shit right now. You better stop that shit you immediately. I am not famous. I have just been working on this comic book. It's still not done yet. Um, but I showed stream a little bit of what I've been doing yesterday. Uh, I did a quick, it's supposed to be a quick stream, but it ended up being a lot longer. I'm working on some emotes for Snoop Dogg right now. Um, so that's been kind of cool. And, uh, I have, um, I have a gig out in Montreal in a few weeks. I'm going to be flying out there to do a talk, a keynote on, uh, online accountability, essentially, and, uh, kind of helping to fix some of the system that's going on right now with people just being able to do whatever the hell they want. So, um, I'm going to be a part of an ongoing research and just chasing. say what? Clout chasing? I ain't clout chasing, man. Listen, this is a this is a this is a nice little paid opportunity gig. You know what I'm no, saying? Not you, not you. Know what I'm saying you're talking about people who clout chase. Oh yeah, man. We can talk about that. <laughs> we can <laughs> we can have some conversations about that shit. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a really dope opportunity. I'm really excited for. Uh, if you can change the name of the podcast, you can send your version of the intro without the vocals. Yo, I appreciate that. And, and first of all. Let's do a shout for everybody who's in chat right now. Uh, we we this is the first time we're doing a, a podcast in a very long time. Uh, we have Get It Gilmer in here, uh, Brichetta, Creative Mind Nine, IR Five Two Eight, Think Dank, who actually did some of the uh, he did the intro uh, audio for the official. So when you guys hear it on iTunes and hear it on. Uh, Spotify, when you hear it on YouTube, when you hear it on all those platforms, it's on a whole bunch of other platforms now too. 
uh that very intro part uh with the beat is is done by think think dank so shout out to you for doing that and pycon fusion uh alvion here as well got to give some love to everybody out here everybody who's talking oh alvion that's uh that's my little my my dojo clan member welcome hey. welcome Hanzo. i like it <clears throat> i like it we got some sirens in the background. People be getting shot out here. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just said I sound like uh, the GTA FM radio. So yes, I guess we're in San Andreas right now. That's that's currently where we're hosting this podcast. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the gist of some of the stuff that's been going on for me uh, since last year. I also was a um, I was on the most virtually and physically attended panel at Pack no at a uh, TwitchCon. So I led a panel there about branding, and I had uh, DJ Knight, DJ Tech Live, Pro, Quesadilla, and Frisk on that panel with me, which was a really awesome opportunity and showing. You know, people took a lot out of that and able to meet up with a lot of really cool people. I've become Warframe partnered since then, Humble Bundle partnered. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happened. Talk about it. Talk yeah. about it. A whole bunch of stuff happened uh, since then, and... I won't go into too much detail because we do want to get to the rest of the podcast. But uh, for those of you who are who want more of what we're going to be giving you today, we're trying to do this only for an hour. Uh, I will continue streaming after this. We'll be playing some Division 2 and then probably a couple of other things. So uh, I don't know if the two of you are down to play some Division 2 or not. But uh... nah, 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 nah. we'll see what happens. What time I get back from washing clothes. True, true. Class stuff. Because uh, 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 IR, uh, what is it? IR 528 needs to come on and uh, get us some more of them levels. I'm only in World Tier 2, so you want to go ahead and jump us up there to, to that at 5. We get Ray <laughs> trying to get get Ray ready, man. He's trying to skip ahead. We got to get Ray ready, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. So we're going to get into gaming. Uh, what, what have you guys been playing? Let's start with uh, Dream this time. Uh, well, currently, what have I been playing? A lot. I've scaled back uh, in the past week and a half on Destiny, only just to take a little bit of a break from it. Um, since coming to the PC world, I've been putting a lot of time into Destiny 2. Got a new clan. We've been raiding regularly. But uh been playing a lot of Division 2. Uh, what else have been playing? I've been struggling with playing and having fun with Apex. Mm-hmm. It's been rough on PC. On the consoles, I'm fine, but it's been rough on PC. Um, There'd be some tryhards out here on PC, man. I tell you that right now. I can't even see where y'all at. <laughs> Yo, we we played that together, fam. Your first time playing Apex on PC was with me, and I was just like, oh no. man, this. Mm, I, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say. It. I'm gonna try to find a clip. I don't know if I have a clip available of this moment. I don't think anyone clipped it because they were all just in disbelief. <laughs> like, it was it was terrible man this man was uh, looking at a wall and then oh, he was looking well, down that part and then man, he was looking up was about, there was somebody yeah. shooting at him from above him he's just like uh 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 the nurse person's over here by the way <laughs> he's just i was about a half second late with everything that i was doing <laughs> so it was really bad so i ended up dying that's the moral of the story but outside of that i've been uh getting back to tales of symphonia that was my throwback is stressing me out so i'm gonna have my throwback thursday now be borderlands one because i enjoy that a lot more mm. but then after you and i converse a little more i have a decision between three games to buy now one of them is much cheaper than the rest but i still don't know yet but yeah that's what i've been playing <clears throat> what, what are those three games tell the people at home <sighs> pinky out well i am deciding to purchase either sekiro dmc5 or God of War. Now, God of War being $39.99 might still be able to be purchased anyway, because it's gone down. But between the other two, do I want something that's really fast paced, beat em up? Or do I want something that's much more challenging and difficult? I don't know yet. I'm, I'm going to tell you as a value shopper, real quick, if I can interject. <laughs> God of War, great game. Great game, great game, great game. Um, you could probably get it for cheap if you wait a little bit, especially like around E3. PlayStation always has sales. Always. This is true. That's fair. Super Duly fair. Added. Pretty legit. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Right. 
But I'll go with God of War. I love God of War. It's, it's so good. <laughs> so, so f good. Oh my God. And I played one through three, man. I played all of them up until this one. You waited this long, so. Exactly. Did you play Ascension? Yeah, I had Ascension. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was okay. Uh, okay. All right. It, it, was, it was okay. My the only player was fun sometimes. Okay. For about 20 minutes, you know? The only reason the only reason I didn't like Ascension as much is because everything they advertised about it was supposed to be this like emotional journey of of like what well, nah there was, was nothing emotional about that at all it was, it was less emotional than three and three was just like him being f***ing pissed off just like yeah. <laughs> but uh right audio lover what you been playing um ugh. uh <laughs> Very, very disappointed in what I've been playing. <laughs> um, I've been playing Anthem. Okay, okay. Um, it's 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 good. It's broken. It's good. Um, story is good. I play a lot. Um, solo. I do play like with teams and stuff like that. Um, I got people to play with. But um, I like going to the fort solo because mm. uh, you could kind of conversate with people. I just wish that those conversations meant something yeah um yeah like it had a real purpose other than just conversations i i don't i don't like that about the game i mean for them making this game like for six years or whatever and i think the bulk of that was them creating these conversations and things like that i think they should have allowed those conversations to manifest into something like there's this one part where you have a conversation with someone who owns a uh, marketplace shop Mm -hmm. and you have a decision on whether to help her link with someone or not and i think that conversation should have been able to allow you to open up her shop other than just keep walking by her shop and then um give you certain things based on like having it be accessible in her shop certain things based on your conversation with her right um and it, it just wasn't that but the conversations in the game were pretty good. The combat's actually good um, when it works. Um, when it works. <laughs> when it works. Um, so not a game I'll tell you to go grab right now, but definitely I want to see what it does in the year. Yeah. yeah. It's been a little while yeah. since I've played it. I'm showing a uh, stream right now, a little bit of footage of uh, of the last time I was playing it. But it, it's a it's a it's a game that has like weird as you can see here, some like performance issues, especially on PC specifically. Like the there are two there are two things that kind of piss me off the most about Anthem. One is the fact that like they give you the ability to fly, but they limit it by like a th uh, they they just limit it with a a meter for just no reason. Yeah. There's just there's no actual reason that it's there, right. other than just to slow you down. Um. And the other thing that pisses me off is the 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 way the story is presented, like f uh, first person perspective on all the cutscenes is just like super unnecessary. It does nothing. It doesn't add any value to the experience. Right. First person for but third person when you go out and play and stuff like that. It, that that was annoying as well. Yeah. Um. At least they made it so that you could sprint inside of the uh, the fort and stuff now. Because on the now, demo, I was like, <laughs> right? Yeah, before it wasn't like that. It was. It was. So, it's so much that they they need to fix as far as just mechanics on it still. Yeah. The concept of the game, like overall, like being that we're we're in this age where like unless it's truly truly bad, you can't be like, oh, it's terrible. Like it, it was just a disappointing game overall. Yeah. It was I mean, I'm with you though. Like, I actually like as disappointed as I am in it. Like, I, there's still a lot of things I do like about it, but I have it's to wait. Yeah, I it's have to wait to get back into it. So, y'all, I don't even know if this is even on the podcast agenda. Um, there was an article that came out from, I believe it was Kotaku, that detailed exactly what happened with the game, and it was I not. Read that. Yeah. It was not flattering. Uh, <laughs> Long story short, I mean, I, th I think the stream can also talk on this a little because I know some of them heard about it, too. Um, long story short, they basically were developing the game for seven years or six years, but they didn't actually start 
working on the game itself until about 16 months into like before it released so the game has been in development for six years but they didn't actually work on the game exactly. until like the last year some change like, when you play it like if, especially if you play it like solo you could feel that because especially yeah. with like the conversations and everything like that you could tell like the writing in this game it's just all over the place yeah. you know it's referencing so, stuff that never happened or like already like finished happening before. Like, that's almost like the initial talk tracks of Destiny. Like they used to reference stuff. You'd be like, uh, what? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what, when did this happen? Exactly. You remember when y'all went down there and killed that one dude? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that never actually happened. <laughs> uh, what have you been playing a lot of though? Uh, Division two, Apex. Um, Sekiro and Devil May Cry and mm -hmm. I will say with certainty that all four of those games are well worth people's time uh, of those four games I think I've played Apex the most of all of those games but right now like there was a time where I was playing Sekiro and I was just like man this game's pissing me off too much to like really encourage other people to play but there was uh, there was definitely more to it than that, because I like you learn more and more as you keep playing through the game. And obviously, like the frustration of playing Souls games, for example, like this is on a different level. <laughs> this is just on an because what happens in this is that you'll you'll die in Sekudo and you lose half of all your resources every time you die. Every You've been doing it up in that game, though. I remember, um, I think just this past Friday, you were playing that level with the, the snake or something, the large snake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Your face was priceless on the stream, too. Man. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> that snake was giving you the business, huh? Man. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to show, I'm going to show, I'm going to show stream something real quick. I'm going to show y'all. It was great. It was I'm, I'm going to put y'all on. Uh, I'm about to just show the whole damn thing. We we can keep talking. I'm just I'm, mm. yeah. This is this is my expression stream right here. All that right there was me. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was struggling. Was that your first time you encountered the snake? Uh -huh. you just saw oh, you like what is that? <laughs> I mean, oh, I, that should be. I, I know, I knew the snakes. I saw, I saw behind closed doors before the game like was like fully uh, unveiled to people. Like I saw it behind closed doors for a while, but like I didn't see that. I didn't see a lot of this. There was a whole bunch of stuff that they left to uh, your imagination. And yeah, this was just this was just a lot. Um, but the snake is a very like <laughs> the snake. Sekiro is a very different game from Souls because it's. It's harder, in my opinion, and it's a game that rewards aggression in a different way than Bloodborne even does. Um, Bloodborne, you have you still have a stamina meter and you have like uh, a counter thing you do with your gun and it's still very Souls like. But this is like this is more Tenchu meets Souls type of thing. Like it, it's heavily focused on stealth and on pure aggressive play and outmaneuvering rather than like invincible a uh, roll invincibility type of thing. Like you don't get roll invincibility in this game. You get a parry that you can do at any time and you get uh, the ability to jump. It's a I like jump. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful game. As y'all can see, it's a really fun game, but it is it is a challenge. Are you playing on Xbox? Playing it on PC. Uh, you just using your Xbox controller. I was using my PlayStation controller, but because of the way some games works, it doesn't register PlayStation controls. So like, it'll like press X to hug wall, uh, and I'll be pressing know, X, and it's like, oh, I'm jumping. That's not. It's the same as Borderlands. I'm tripping. I feel, I feel you. Yeah, <clears throat> it's super annoying when they don't do that, but you know, it'd be like that. And by the way, everyone in chat, if you have questions that you want to ask, make sure to ask the question and uh, tag me so that I, I can uh, put that on the agenda as like a in the question and answer section. But yeah, that's the gist of what I've been playing for the most part. Devil May Cry 5 is just like phenomenal. People, if you got the money, just go buy it. Please. So good. Um, and yeah. I think that uh, that covers uh, the stuff that I've been mostly playing. 
Mm -hmm. Oops, that is not. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, Project Stadia has been unleashed, and I want to get a little bit of uh, impressions from y'all. I think the idea and the premise behind it is great. I okay. like that it's coming from Google. Uh, I I trust Google a lot when it comes to internet and internet based things. I'm just saying I love me some Google stuff. I have Google Fiber right now. So mm. with all of that said, um, I think there will be some hurdles, of course, um, the, when the initial things come out and the kinks that are going along with it. I mean, but they've gone so far as to develop a, an actual controller for it. It looks pretty good and it looks like it has the best of both worlds between an Xbox controller and a PlayStation controller. Um, and if they're really trying to gear and give us the ability to have a 4K 60 uh, frames per second gaming experience for those of those for those people that maybe don't have that kind of access to it, I think that's a really good thing. I definitely agree. Uh, mm -hmm. How's your experience with Google Fiber been? Great. Uh, of course, like for, for my PC, it's been amazing for my consoles, as with any Internet provider you have, regardless, they always have their internal limitations. But as far as doing things on my PC, whether it be or my PC or laptop, Wi-Fi versus Ethernet cord, a big difference. But both of them are consistent regardless. That's what's up. I've been um, a huge proponent for Google Fiber, even though I don't have it. I know that Google has been about, you know, people having the ability to freely and openly use the internet they way the way they want to use it and they have pretty from what i hear fast speeds available to people so that is a dope thing mm -hmm. and they so what the thing is they're supposed to be spreading a lot more than what they are i guess they didn't realize how costly it could be to change the whole infrastructure for it um that's part of it yeah <laughs> and so that I, yeah because like in a, even just Georgia alone, they were like initially, yeah, we're coming out here. And then like I go back to the site and like half the list is going like, wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all supposed to come out to me. At least now that I've moved, I'm in an area that has it. But yeah, yeah they also work very quickly in terms of uh fixing any kind of issue. Mm. So so audio so, level, you have experience in this kind of field in general, kind of working with yeah. the city and, and getting provisions and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So tell us a little bit about uh, the challenges that Google has in terms of implementing Google Fiber and, and consequently anything that's going to happen with Stadia because from... Right. Go ahead. Yeah, so so basically, um, I mean, for you to do anything, it takes permission. And then depending on the state you live in, um, you know, you got to get state permits and then, you know, local city or county permits or whatever the case may be. And... Um, just like out here in florida they were supposed to come out to tampa and and tampa and jacksonville are like one of the two regions in florida that is um kind of like an all-inclusive county and city kind of a deal mm -hmm. um so it would kind of be easier for them to go to those areas rather than um let's say uh south florida like miami where you have three different regional municipalities um on top of you know your local cities and things like that to got, try to get permits for so just to come down to south florida it, it would take them um, almost forever mm -hmm. and then you know the competition don't want that so you know it, it's all about the lobbyists as well um, yeah that's all i'm going to say about that um <laughs> but as far as project stadia is i'm i'm very interested to see what they do with that um to me i don't think they're betting on their Google Fiber infrastructure, I think they're going to be betting on 5G. Because mm, um, mm, I yeah. see that that's, um, I'm getting a lot more permits and things for that. That's a lot easier to go through because um, you don't got to, you know, dig trenches and things like that. You just put a pole up next, put a pole up next kind of a deal. Yeah. Um, a lot of the pushback has been the, the frequency and how the poll's been going up, the distance and things like that, because of um, you're talking about more data, you need the polls to be closer together. Mm -hmm. And that also depends on policy around your, your municipality. Like even my municipality, we're kind of looking at that. Um, you know, we, we have it at a mile separation, but these things are, they're talking about half a mile separation. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting. 
honestly, because, um, you know, even with 4G, you know, you've seen the type of technology and apps we got with that. Um, I'm betting on on Project Stadia as far as the concept. Mm -hmm. um, the platform itself, I think it all depends on um, not so much the infrastructure, but the content. Um, we know PlayStation and Xbox kind of has similar things. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a longer library, even as far as exclusives are concerned. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, you know, it, it just it, honestly, it all depends. Um, I, I, I found it funny that they when they were talking about um, their technology and, and the hardware they're using to, to stream this kind of content. They were comparing it to current generation, being it like twice as much as current generation. Um, but we all know, you know, the, you know, the Xbox, the next Xbox, the next PlayStation is going to be, you know, way more advanced. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see, you know, how it compares to that. Yeah, I feel that. I am in a similar boat where I see a lot of potential, but like the fact that internet just isn't that strong everywhere is kind of a huge deal when it comes to being able to fully implement this and being able to reliably play like a fighting game for example where every single frame matters every single link you do depends on the consistency and the 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 consistency of those frames themselves and being able to not worry about latency like what i, I i'm kind of in like i want to see how it works as far as the the controller the controller is actually connected through wi-fi directly to their servers mm -hmm. um so i, I want to know the, the kind of concept of how two controllers would work to bounce you know as far as input output um translates with that mm -hmm. i think this this type of technology works well with single player games mm. um, because they were also saying basically based off the controller and it being Wi-Fi, when you move from uh, platform to platform, whether it be like the PC, laptop, or whatever have you, anything that's Google based, like you shouldn't have to go through reconnecting. It should automatically sync up, which is dope. It's, it's very dope. I just how. <laughs> yeah. And like how how close do you need to be to the source too? like yeah. right now, my my Wi-Fi is in another room over there. Like if I'm playing over here. Is that going to now be an issue for me to just play at all? Right. Or is it going to try to pick up whatever else you have closer? I probably should get an Ethernet plug in there too, huh? Mm-hmm. They. I mean, back. that would be nice. Well, I want to be, I want to be hardwired. <laughs> so I hardwire all the way to a different room. <laughs> that just sounds crazy. Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right so so mitzi had a question yes we're gonna i, I, I put it into the uh i okay, put it into yeah. the uh the last section of it so we'll we'll answer all questions that people have uh at cool. the last part of this the uh the podcast um speaking of last part of the podcast we're not there yet but there are some pax east highlights that we can go over a little bit uh since we are on the topic of talking about um we talked a little bit about uh, Borderlands, Stadia, stuff that's coming up, blah, blah, blah. Um, Borderlands 3 was unveiled at PAX East, and uh, that's going to be lit. going to be lit as f***. I'm so... Hey, it's supposed to be cross-platform. Wait, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. They, that's what they say. That's a rumor. Yeah, yeah. the cross-platform is a rumor. Yeah, son. Cross-platform or cross-play? Cross-play, cross, cross play. sorry. Cross-play. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. Mm. Uh, I guess I shot my load off a little too quick. <clears throat> hey man, it, it, it cross platform. You never know. It could. I mean, <laughs> well, hold on. Wait, the 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 link or whatever that I had does say cross platform. Okay, um, hit us with that link. According. Yeah, let me. Yeah, well, this is a picture that's probably been created by somebody. Oh, this is my IGN. Hold please. Now I could see cross platform if we're talking. PS4 to PS5, Xbox One to the next generation of Xbox. I mean, yeah. Relatively close. Yeah. I mean, they're at the end. Yeah. Relative, that... GTA 5 did not do that. 
did if I was like. They did not. You're going to have to buy that again. <laughs> and that was like 60 for a hot little bit on the PS4. Like, Honestly, geez. they did have a deal where you can get it for 30 if you trade in your, your PS3 version, but, yeah, but it was definitely one of those situations where it was like, oh. Yo, they rolled that 60 bucks for like damn near three years, bro. I know. <laughs> really so Borderlands 3 supports cross-platform co-op according to Microsoft Store. Hmm. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah. Well, cross, I, okay. Um, that's interesting because that means you could do PC and Xbox. Like if you buy it on the Xbox, you get it on the PC. Yeah, like the Play Anywhere thing. Yeah. I can see that. I, I could definitely see that. I'm wondering, uh, let's read this. We reached out to publisher 2K for comment who say cross play. Okay, so they're, what they're doing right here is kind of interchangeably using pla cross platform and cross play. And I guess it's important to uh, distinguish between them, at least my understanding of the differences. Uh, cross play being that you can play with anyone across any platform. Right. And cross platform being you can play it on any platform and then like keep your progress type of thing. So with that being the case, um, my biggest thing was about the crossplay, not necessarily cross. Yeah, your progression or that just being able to play with whoever with the. That's what I was. Yeah. Because you you guys are getting it on PC, right? Yeah. Probably we'll see. Especially especially if it's crossplay, definitely After I'll probably go with PC over just because it's just convenient convenience. I'm really hoping that uh. I got tagged on something on uh, Twitter. Uh, one of the community managers was looking for streamers to work with on this. And I don't know what they mean by work with. If that means like do some early stuff with it or like fly out to their studio and like do some play, uh, do some play sessions so they can record it and put it up on like whatever. I don't know what they are looking to do, but like I, I want in. <laughs> I want in on that. Oh, um, well, that's definitely my favorite Lewis shooter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's definitely one of the, you know, it's one of the, it's one of the one first person shooters that my girlfriend actually likes to play. And so we'll play it together and she loves it. Mm -hmm. It was like one of the first games I got for my PS3 when I got a PS3. Four nice. Nice. Um, I had an opportunity to check out uh, Samurai Showdown at PAX East. And How was that? It was interesting. I, I never played the original Samurai Showdown, but I've seen like plenty of stuff about the characters and seen it in motion before. And it seems like a more slow, deliberate style of fighting game. And I like it, but at the same time, I do wish it was a little bit faster, but it does mean that like, every hit now kind of has a lot more impact than it does in many other games similar to this in, in style. That was SNK, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember playing that back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of you remember the old school, old school versions. Um, was there any other things that stood out to you from PAX East? Um, I was watching it through stream a lot. Mm -hmm. Some of the, some of the audio kept cutting out mm. videos, missing things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the one things I did get to see was Streets of Rage 4. Mm, I didn't even get to see that while I was there. Tell me about it. Um, I'm I'm interested. I like it. Um, I wanna. I, I'm I've been a big Streets of Rage fan. Um, that is co couch co-op is great. Mm -hmm. um, we need more of those. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, I mean the only thing about this one was that um, it's it was only two two people. Um, you only get to pick uh, the, the guy and the girl. Um, I remember like Streets of Rage 2 and 3, there were like three to four characters to pick from. Mm. And being that this is the fourth iteration, I, I kind of wish you, you did get maybe four players uh, to choose from and even being a four-way uh, couch co-op kind of the game. But other than that, it was I liked it. Okay, okay. That's what's up. Um, I'm trying to yeah, remember... My oh. biggest takeaway was simply Borderlands. That's all. That's all I got. That's all I cared about. They said Borderlands, and that's all I could think about. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that was the main thing that mattered. Main thing. Um, there was another game. Uh, it was called Katana. I'm going to YouTube this because I don't remember the name off the top of my head. 
uh, why you do that i was i was kind of scared um on, about borderlands because of how many times it, it took them to actually reveal it yeah <laughs> like the computer couldn't handle it i was like ooh. Yeah. I am not getting this on no PC. If they computer can't handle this, nah, so, bro. <laughs> so what they what they ended up doing, they were using a computer that was supplied to them by PAX. Right. And then they uh they What did they end up doing? It was a 4K video and it was playing through Windows Media Player and it was just it was just struggling. It was having a hard time. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Man, I really want to see this." And then Not they released, no yeah, <laughs> they released another trailer like a couple of days after. And I showed my girl and she was like, she's like, babe, you can't see me right now, but I'm totally twerking in my chair <laughs> at excitement. I was like, but you got pictures? No. Cause like, right. I want to see this. <laughs> Picture didn't happen. Picture didn't happen. Uh, but yeah. Are you talking about Katana Zero? Yeah, I'm playing it right now. Uh, no, showing it on screen right now. Oh. Um, I'm not really huge on like the pixel games, but this one is a this one's a unique in a way, in a lot of ways. It's it's different and it's it's got like a cyberpunk aesthetic to it. It's got stealth in it. I like some cyberpunk. Yeah, so it's it's pretty dope. Pretty dope indeed. I like my little eight bit, sixteen bit games. Yeah, yeah they're they're a good pace changer. Sometimes you just be bored and you don't know what to play. Let me just play something real quick. That's true. You don't want to be too too invested, and then you find out they they got a lot more. Like a lot of these types of games, will can surprise you with how much story and how much have gone into what they put behind it. Yeah, and for sure. Like, oh, you just like pleasantly surprised. Like, oh, yeah, well, all right then. Yeah, yeah. There were there were a number of times where that happened. Um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, oh, the biggest example I have of this is. Uh, <sighs> Now I'm forgetting the name of it. It's a 8-bit uh, story-based game. It's a it's an action RP. It's an RPG, but it's also uh, I can How not, long ago have you played it? It was like a, two years ago, three years. No, I think it was like two years ago. It's been out for a while. The only one I know that's that, like that was that shovel. Not shovel knight, but it's a it's a. I think it was around that time that it came out. Uh, I'm gonna remember it later, and it's gonna be in a totally different context. And I'm gonna be like, <laughs> I remember that. Shit. <laughs> um, stream, help me out here. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I wish I had him. I, I can't. You got to pick up the slack, stream. We believe in you. And like, you start the game off as a child, and like, you're you're you have a guardian, but she's like some cow lady. It sounds really. <laughs> Sounds really fucked up, but not shopkeeper. Um, what's going on, Mad Queen? I don't know. Okay, Undertale, yo, this is why. This is why I fuck oh, with you, girl. This is why yeah. I fuck with you, cause she knew exactly yes. what I was talking about without me even remembering what the hell I was even. All right, and it's funny because I have Undertale and I've played some. And yeah, I, it, it is like it's surprising a lot going on. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot going on in there. Yeah, so that's a, that's a really good example of a, a 16-bit game or 8-bit, whatever whatever the bit is, that is just, like, really... It surprises you at how well done it is in terms of, like, implementing new mechanics and, like, new fourth-wall-breaking fourth, break, fourth wall breaking things. The cow was a giveaway. <laughs> I think it's a... Oh, it might be a goat. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the bovines and all of them milk-producing animals. <laughs> <laughs> funny side story regarding that um i was drawing yesterday and you know I, I mentioned i was doing some emotes for snoop and one of his emotes is uh two of the emotes had to do with milk uh because he likes to he likes to kind of make fun of people that he's like you know beating in games it's like oh you're gonna cry you need your milk you need your milk baby so he'll say stuff like that so like i literally went on google and I don't have safe search on because why would you ever have safe search on? Um, we grown. We grown out here. Uh, <laughs> I typed in anime milk and I did it off screen. <laughs> and there were definitely lots of NSFW references in there. So uh, I'm glad 
I didn't do it on the screen that everybody can see, cause uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, yay, yay. <laughs> been embarrassing. I mean, I I wasn't mad, but I was just like, I'm just not trying to get banned on Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all it was. But uh, with that said, those were the kind of highlights from PAX East for me and stream. Feel free and, and people on YouTube and Spotify look, mention us on Twitter. Uh, what were your highlights of PAX East? What were the things that stood out to you as really interesting and cool experiences? I don't know what I missed. Exactly. Let us know what look, I was there and I missed stuff. Like, let us know what we missed so we can figure it all out. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. Go to so Google Anime. Girl, you name. <laughs> Girl, What's you good, Shrope? You nasty. The third behemoth. Shout out to another clan member. What's going on with you? You know what you're going to find when you Google search that. Yeah, buddy. It's going to have something to do with anime titties. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting the information out there for the masses so y'all know what to expect if you type that in. <laughs> Anime milk. Are you about to do it now, too? <laughs> right on. I mean, I'm not streaming, though. Uh, you're right. You're right. So I can look at Anime milk all day, all right? He's going to look at Anime milk. There's, uh, there's all others day. about. This is too much fun. <laughs> it's way too much fun. Uh, we're going to move on to the next topic, though. Um, the meat of the podcast. This is where things get juicy. This is where you, you flavor, you sprinkle a little bit of salt on there, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of paprika sometimes. You get some lemon juice in there to get it all nice and moist and juicy and citrusy. What is mm -hmm. the most important factor as a viewer? For gaming content on Twitch and YouTube. And a little bit of context for those who don't know. I actually put a poll out a while ago asking this very question. And uh, there were two things. There were 243 votes. Holy shit. Didn't realize. Um, humor and engaged community were the top responses. Like neck and neck. Yeah, basically neck and neck. And I want to talk about it because it's one of those weird things where, like, you'll see a lot of the the top streamers they'll um, they'll stream, but they won't really interact much with their community. And obviously, we're doing a podcast, so it's a little bit less about the interactivity side of this until we get to the Q and A section. But um, let's, let's talk about it for a second from from you guys' perspective. What would you say are the most important aspects and why? Uh, well, I do have two different criteria when it comes to Twitch and YouTube. Uh, for Twitch, to be honest, um, most of the people that I watch on Twitch are people that I know, mm. that I've met in some sort of way. Um, as far as like the bigger names on Twitch, I'll usually check them out here and there. Mm. Um, like there's a couple of Destiny streamers that I, I do just check out from time to time just to see if sometimes they're doing like blind runs and if I haven't got a chance to do it, I'll see if what I can glean from that. Mm -hmm. But when I do watch Twitch, I, I do want to see that you're still communicating with your 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 audience. Yeah. So some of them get so big and I don't think it's a knock or anything, but some people and it get because it gets hard to maintain to a degree, but you get so big where you just get caught up in the game and you haven't said anything. It's like 30,000 text threads, but nothing. You haven't acknowledged anything. You can't do that. And then for YouTube, it's just really just I, as far as what I watch on YouTube is always usually informational. Yeah, but they have personality. So that's all. And I find it's really it. it YouTube and Twitch in terms of like the the method of entertainment, the style of entertainment is, is just so different because you know, YouTube there are very few YouTubers who actually go through and look at all their comments. Like they they put it up, they'll respond to like the first 10 and then just be done with it, which is like I get it, it's fine cuz you have to you have to kind of like step in and step out, go out of your way throughout the process like respond to everyone, right? But with Twitch, like the whole reason why Twitch is a thing and why you do it on Twitch is because it's a live experience. It's a live stream. It's a mm -hmm. it's a it's a people coming together and hanging out. And again, I mentioned earlier that we're doing a podcast, so that's why it's a little bit less interactive because it's more about 
the kind of informational side of that and kind of going through the the show and then we will get to the question and answer thing where we're actually interacting more with chat um i don't know it's interesting but audio lover tell us tell us about it um with me i mean like i said like uh, dream said i i definitely have two criteria as well um with twitch i do like my my twitch to be funny um when i'm watching it it all depends though because sometimes like you know it, it, it'll be like a horror game or something like that i mean mm. definitely your reactions is, it's funny i'm gonna laugh all day but if you do something stupid um <laughs> but when i when i watch someone on twitch it, it depends on if it's like a, a role play um i definitely like the gta 5 role play there's actually a specific uh, person i do watch i'm not, I'm not um gonna say but um the role plays are are great mm. um funny you can say the name um, if you want to by the way uh okay um afro oh yeah that's the homie yes please okay. say his name that's my bro <laughs> all right cool um i watch a lot of afro uh role play with his gta 5 it's definitely dope um and then everything else is really just about community mm. um, and sometimes i'll check like i'll have games i'll follow just to see how many people are still playing that specific game um so like right now i'm following uh, elite dangerous um just to see you know who, who's playing how people are playing um not just more for information mm -hmm. and then on on youtube i'll do i'll do like role plays um mainly walkthroughs no streams mm. mainly walkthroughs mm. um and then my kids all they do is is uh role play they they, they watch the hell out of those damn uh, roblox role play, so <laughs> So I so two things. One, uh, huge shout out to the homie Afro. He's um I've actually had him on the show before. Um, okay. I've played things with him to, uh, and we we met a long long time ago. So we're we're very 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 good friends. Um, he actually put me on to something that may be happening in the future for me in terms of working with a team. So nice. No guarantees there, but because of him and because of a uh, DZ Live, shout out to you as well. Um another awesome streamer uh they they kind of put me on to some interesting stuff so major shout out to him also i am going to be potentially getting into some gta rp so i have a character in mind for anyone who's been a, a long time follower of of what i do here on youtube and twitch uh you'll know about rhino meat <laughs> ah, the war yep bringing it back to 2013 2014 bringing it back all the way from back there jc matt 120s video literally yes, yes. <laughs> offensive warframe so i'm gonna i'm gonna bring him as a character in <laughs> gta 5 and he's just yes. i'm i'm very uh i'm very excited oh, to see excited. what yeah i'm excited to see where that brings us because there's some it's gonna be some fuckery, like i can tell you that right now <laughs> Jeez, yeah, I'm about to download me some Warframe right now just for that. Yo, War man, listen, Warframe is a is a fantastic game. Like if if there that is Oni's destiny, by the way. <clears throat> I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a little something about the difference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I'll say is that there are many different styles of builds that you can do in the game that differ greatly from what you can do in Destiny. Destiny has a much better PvP experience. So if you love PvP, definitely go for Destiny. But Warframe is entirely free. First of Warframe all, this is true. Warframe lost me because it got so big so quick. And I'm still like 2014, 2015 build. Yeah, listen, it, it's a game that uh, similar to Destiny. It doesn't really, uh, at least to Destiny 1, didn't really explain itself very well. Warframe, I, go ahead. Can I reset my character? Yes and no. Um, okay. You can. So when I mean, you level on PS4, okay. When you when you level up your your frames, uh, the your level there's no there's nothing you have to decide between leveling up. It's just a a set amount of bonuses you get each time you level up. So there's nothing specifically to to reset there. All of it is based on your mods. So back in the day in Warframe where you had to you had to put mods on your Warframe to have abilities, 
that's not a thing anymore. So you have access to all your abilities once you level up enough to have those abilities. So once you've done that, like you don't have to put the ability on anymore. It more so comes down to the modifications that you put on it. So you can you can reset any of that stuff. So you can literally put what you can swap stuff in and out whenever you want. If you want more health, you can do that. If you want more strength for your your abilities, you can do that. If you want some like quirky other perks that you can add on top of your abilities or augment, you can do that. So I'll take a look at it again. Yeah, it's 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 a incredibly deep game. Um, but it does require a little bit of a little bit of uh acceptance of the fact that things are are complicated a little bit so if you if you can get past that aspect of it and like for me for example i'm happy to help out with any of that stuff um having a guide for warframe is is super helpful it feels like it's key nowadays it's key it's key. yeah like, like starting off like being out for a minute and then starting back up it feels like it's key to have yeah yeah, yeah. kind of like having a mentor <laughs> yeah. yeah can you make a female with yams on warf um <laughs> you with yams, there are a couple of characters that at least have round yams i will that i will be the biggest yams but I, they're round. I will say there are some yams in that game that are quite lovely but what you're asking about in terms of creating a character with yams that would be no, but there is a creation aspect to the game that I don't want to ruin for you. And all will become clear at a later date whenever you whenever you get to that point. So if you if you're interested in Warframe, and haven't gotten there yet, definitely join the discord. We have a ton of people in the community who who play it heavily uh, and who can also provide information if I'm not around to do so. So definitely do that. But yeah, there are there are many cakes to be had in Warframe. Uh, Saren, Saren, and Saren Prime are prime examples of uh, of that, as well as Hildren is a, in a different way. She's got she's got muscle yams. She's like bodybuilder, bodybuilder style aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? If you yeah, uh, and uh, Mesa Prime, otherwise known as Basa Prime, she got cakes. She got them yams. That's who you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and uh speaking of muscular um what's her name Ar is it aria amara amara from borderlands 3 there's definitely going to be a lot of people with fetishes for muscle women because of that that character i mean she fine she yeah she's fine as fuck i've never been scared of muscles on a woman hey yeah. right let's talk let's talk about it for a second let's, yeah, talk, let's about talk about it about it hey Shit, i'll follow i'll follow several uh, female bodybuilders on Instagram. So whatever, as do I. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah now nah, I'm saying you've had yo, you've had that fetish already. Listen, now, is it? Can it even be called a fetish? I think it's more of just like a. It's a, a it's a it's a preference. It's a it's a, yeah, it's a preference or like a thing you like. I don't know if it could be a fetish or not, but I've seen I've seen many an attractive uh, female bodybuilders. <laughs> And part of it, it's like you, you inspired me to work out more. And then the other part is you inspired me to do something else. <laughs> Girl, Emmy with them thighs. <laughs> Muscles on a woman and sexy. Yo, I feel you. I feel yes. you. Yes. She said, boy. Hold on, wait a minute. I got to do it right. Boy. Boy. <laughs> You've been looking at that brand due to cost. Oh, hundred. Wait. Oh, uh, uh, artist talking about he got a Huey on. Nice uh, tablet. Nice workout in the bedroom type of thing. Oh my, muscles on a woman is nice. Ever look at a pro track and field women? Yo, the thighs like Venus and Serena Williams. Have you seen them play tennis? Who? Track and field, my favorite type. Mm. Hey, Devon. Hey, it's how you want to die. <laughs> Yo, appreciate it. You tripping? Nah, man, that's ain't no better way to get sent to the Lord. I'm just saying. De death by snoo snoo. Let's go. You know, you know, how, you know how I feel about it. <laughs> that Amazonian queen status. You know what I'm saying? I'm here for that. Crush my pelvis. <laughs> Who needs a pelvis when you got them thighs? <laughs> <laughs> Passengers, you have just boarded on the man. 
passing train. <laughs> sugar, 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 sugar. <laughs> uh, but moving on from that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I we kind of went on a tangent a little bit, which is a beautiful thing. Um, let us know in the, in the comments below what your uh, thoughts are in terms of like watching content on Twitch and YouTube and what's important to you as a viewer. Uh, moving on from there, totally unrelated. This is not a good segue, but you know, whatever. <laughs> is Capcom back from the grave? Everyone's pressing F to pay respect. Yo, press F to pay respects, please and thank you. All of those information, all those important things. What does the F stand for? Fuck. <laughs> <It's the L. laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have an XLR KD myself for saying this. Uh, I apologize. That is not not what the F stands for at all. That's not even close. You know what? I'm a I'm a I'm gonna do you a favor, right? I'm a I'm a YouTube it for you. Would YouTube press F to pay respects? You're gonna be so disappointed to know it had nothing to do with it. <laughs> what is this? What? Oh, that's booty. <laughs> Well, I like my version better. Oh. <laughs> I can't with this man. I cannot. But in terms of Capcom, yeah, y'all, y'all can y'all have much better input on that than I. As a, like I said, I I feel like if I get Devil May Cry, I'm gonna enjoy. It. I just like that style of game. And yeah. It looks pretty. Yeah. Um, but <sighs> the rem- I don't think a remaster can bring you back. It needs to be something that's new. Now, that, that's just my opinion. Like, if if based on just kind of our, our topic, it was based off of DMC5 and the remake of RE2. That's kind of how the question was put together. So just off of RE2, a remaster, I can't say a remaster is going to bring you back. What about Resident Evil 7, though? I mean, that was pretty fire. I, I don't have a problem with Capcom. Yeah. My gripe with Capcom came with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and shit. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, exactly. Look over there. Exactly. We try to act like it exists. But. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Capcom has a pretty good run. Like, I think that was like a hiccup in a long line of successes. Like, they had Monster. What was it? Monster Hunter World? Yes. Yeah, so that came out uh, after like Resident Evil 7. and Which is fun. Yes. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite came out before then. So right. they. Uh, since then, like they, they literally haven't really had much in the way of success up until Resident Evil 7 launched. I'm gonna be real honest with you. Go ahead. Go, my bad, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like, it was, uh, there were a, a lot of games that Capcom was releasing that were like utter garbage uh, or or just not not great. Not to the caliber of what I remember Capcom being growing up, like Onimusha, Dino Crisis, uh, Mega Man. I'm saying though, like there were all these games that ca- and Devil May Cry three. My God, that game was so good. There were so many games that Capcom had in its sleeve that it just like they just let like Devil May Cry four was garbage. <laughs> like that game was just. How about DMC? DMC wasn't garbage, but it was an unnecessary reboot. It, it was a reboot that literally no one asked for. Like, if they had just called it a totally different property, I think people would have liked it more. Recepted it, yeah, it would have been. Like, that, that's how I felt about Advanced Warfare. Oh, you think? <laughs> like, Advanced Warfare, if, if they didn't call it Call of Duty, I think people would have liked it more. But because it was Call of Duty and, like, it just was very, very different from Call of Duty. I don't know what this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Now the reason if- the reason why I say it with Devil May Cry is because like they changed elements of the sto- they rebooted the story so like I was fine with like a combat rehaul if they were to do that but they changed the story like compl- to be something totally like detached from what it was before and it was it was it was even made it was made even more unnecessary because there were a lot of unanswered questions from the previous Devil May Cry game 
for, which I told you was garbage, um, that they could have just spent that time like clarifying. They ended up doing that Devil May Cry Five, and like that's all they needed to do. I don't. I mean, I like DMC. I think um, the marketing could have probably been better. I don't know. Um, I feel like it, it's like how DC and, and I'm throwing it to the movies, but how DC is handling their um, extended universe right now. Oh with, Lord! With the Joker film and and all this other nonsense they're doing. Um, if they could have done something like that, like listen, this is just a reimagining our interpretation of what Devil May Cry um, is to us. This is um, a homage and a thank you to the fans here. Check it out, whatever. I think it probably would have been receptive more than um, they made it seem like DMC was going to be the new point for the franchise. And I think um, that's what people didn't want. Yeah. I think ultimately what's going to bring Capcom back because this is this this game always comes up every time we talk about Capcom, Oni. Deep down, <laughs> bro, I and shit like my thing. shit like that. Like everyone was like, "Ooh, that shit look like it's gonna be great." What is it? Oh, that is it, yeah. It, where is it? It's nowhere. It ain't nowhere. Twenty thirteen. Like, yo, where is this game? <laughs> Not coming. Why? It's the nah. it's the crackdown of uh of Capcom. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't mean to shit on, on on Crackdown three, but at least Crackdown came out with two. You know what I'm saying? They they came out with two before they start having issues. No, that's what I'm saying. Crackdown three, like it was <laughs> that game. <laughs> uh, and I was just looking at some footage like right before. I didn't even know they had um some unreleased footage for uh, Deep Down at like some Tokyo trade show kind of a thing. Like this game looked like it was going to be the the next thing it was some, yeah we'll see all i know is i'm slick man so i've been i only i have taken your advice and i have been trying to enter in some giveaways because i definitely need a switch for scale bound <laughs> the theory with that and right now and like and ultimate <laughs> that game and was ultimate lies, yes yeah that game was canceled and then <laughs> platinum was like oh by the way <laughs> We've been doing a thing on the backside, so uh That's the worst. Yo, that is the worst. They got paid by Microsoft to start working on it and then just like took it and ran. Like, is that even legal? Can they do that? Uh, Did the IP belong to Microsoft or nah? I don't believe so. Oh, that's a major yikes. Hey, they did that shit though. They, <laughs> they did, they did that shit though. <laughs> Battle yes. tactics in business one and one on one. That's the yeah. worst. And we, we we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the anthem situation and kind of how we're feeling about anthem. Um, I, we won't talk about it too much because we did talk about it earlier than that. But it just this is just kind of the. Rub a little salt on an old wound. I bought this game. Like I was, I was feeling it and liked a lot of aspects of it. But it is definitely uh, not in the greatest condition in terms of like their newest patch update just kind of broke things more. It's like yeah, they they can't really catch a break right now. And Anthem. Yeah. Yeah, Dream not even playing it, and me and him both play. Like... I'm just waiting for the all the kinks to get ironed out. Yeah. Ever since, ever since that mission. Well, ever since that mission had me in that black screen and I had to redo it and I got mission for like half a day and couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah, that shit kind of had me feeling some kind of way. I feel that. I feel that. As a Fallout fan, it's canceled. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We talking about Fallout 76? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't want us to talk about that. Listen, I, 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 I got a lot of respect for many people who work at Bethesda. Uh, the hard work that they have to do. Um, mm, I've got nothing. I can't even I can't even <laughs> articulate like how it makes me feel to like see that game in the, the I d I don't follow I don't follow the fallout situation. So so what happened with with 76? <clears throat> Because Fallout 4 seemed like it was like the success and they were riding high and then all of a sudden, like two years later, they come out with 76 and it's like... Yeah, Fallout 4 was 
it, it had a lot of redeeming factors, but it had a lot of things that that pissed a lot of people off. So as a as a diehard Fallout fan myself, the main thing that pissed me off about that was the illusion of choice in that game. Some games do a better job of making it making you feel like the choices that you make will have an impact on what happens. And a lot of the choices you make in precisely like that was a really great example of like how choices can shape everything um this game a fallout 4 uh gave you dialogue options that when you selected them said something that wasn't what the dialogue option basically was so like it was a very confusing way of like handling conversations just basic conversations with people and it also uh like a lot of the choices that that you can make in terms of like impacting the story were things that like in previous games there were always like a third or fourth hidden option because you you had your speech level up and you were able to actually navigate the situation and like make people see reason it was none of that in this game it was none of it so um those were my biggest kind of gripes about fallout 4 aside from like engine stuff fallout 76 was a exercise in It was just it was just written with a ton of bugs, uh, user interface stuff like connectivity stuff. It's an always online game. Um, there were no actual NPCs. Oh. Yeah, there were no actual NPCs in the game. Oh, okay. So it was all uh, automated uh, recordings or other players that were the NPCs of the entire experience. And like really? they literally copied and pasted the dragon animations from Skyrim. And they, there's a, just a giant bat creature that you can go against. And they literally just copied and pasted all the animations from that. And you can, like, there was a, there's a side-by-side -side video of it. And it's just, it's just really embarrassing. Like, the, they said they spent all this time on the lighting uh, technology. And, like, the lighting is worse than it was in Fallout 4. Like, <laughs> things were super broken. R.I.P. Rip. All right, Peter just killed the club. <clears throat> yeah, I. Mm. Anyway, uh, hopefully Anthem gets to to fixing itself because it's a it's a it's got a good foundation, I believe. It, the core gameplay is fun. They just need to get it together. And a big thing, they just need to remove the whole booster timer. Basically, there's no reason you no can't reason. be like. I, I, at first, when you were complaining about that, I was like, "Yeah, it's not that bad." But then it's like I keep thinking about it. You can't show me this as like you're part of your flying everywhere, but I can't fly everywhere. Yeah, and, and again, there's there's no reason outside of slowing you down so that you have to take longer on your missions. There's no reason outside of that. Like Warframe, and I know I keep bringing this up because it's a phenomenal game. Warframe gives you the um, it gives you the arc wings. And you can literally just on open world missions use it as much as you want. There's no limit on it. There's even ones that go faster. There's no excuse. There's, there's these other games that have come out that have done these things that you're trying to do in your game have done it better. Like the loot is the the loot shouldn't be an issue. Like we have all these yeah, games that the loot an issue. I don't, I don't get that. We have all these other games that like set the foundation of that. Like they already did the hard part. All you gotta do was just do it. Now, come on, Black, you know that now you are at much higher level, but you know that going up to those levels, the loot was not very rewarding at all, especially and even within. Oh, yeah, especially how do you make it more of an issue after the update and you completely remove getting masterwork items from doing certain events? <laughs> I don't know how it happens. It's not really nice, though. Like when you get a masterwork. Like, there's, like I said, the UI, the attention to detail within the UI. Oh, God. Not as far. Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Because I know where you're going. But as far as the animation, when you break something down or you unlock it and it does all that, that's very pretty. As far as the the need to do so, like being that they don't have the quick joins and things like that, I think that's a little lazy. <sighs> Even even like the in-game, and I know a lot of people don't do in-game voice chat, but in-game voice chat is broken. Like, that is trash. Like, this is 2019. Like, in-game voice chat should not be broken. I don't know, man. <clears throat> they gonna get it together. We gonna, we, gonna, we gonna bow our heads and say, Lord, 
let these motherfuckers get this shit together. All right. <clears throat> All I'm going to say on that is that there are a lot of games that came out within the last year that just do not have good UI. And I don't understand. All right. So here's my big, like, I know you guys play PC. Mm -hmm. um, here's my biggest thing with UI right now, because I'm, a, well, I'm primarily PS4. Um, I have come to the realization that developers do not develop games for console. Um, no matter what, like the, the UI is fundamentally, like it's fundamentally meant for PC, um, in your face monitor, like playing from a TV that's probably eight to 10 feet away. And even God of War had this issue. Like, I don't understand how God of War where your subtitles and your text and all this stuff Tiny. is like microscopic. Yeah. Like, dude, you're developing, like, who the hell, like, the environment that they play test <laughs> these games. Like, I swear to God, like, no one plays tests for actual console. It just doesn't make sense. And it's every game that comes out. Like, mm -hmm. play a game on console on your TV and see if I'm lying. Every game. Yeah, like, you gotta, you, you gotta be playing in, like, 1440p or 4K to, like, actually be able to see because it's so small it'll be I, blurry i promise you even if you played it like even if your tv was that capable and you're 10 feet away i don't think you're really like out here reading and then who the hell reads like two pages on a freaking tv screen yeah don't put that on a freaking video game <laughs> console dog. that's not what i'm trying to do <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong that's not, I'm not trying to do that. I think I think Destiny was great at that when they did the app for the lore. Yeah. They had all the stuff you needed to read on that. Like, I think Anthem should do that because Anthem has way too much stuff for you to be reading. Just to console. get into missions in Anthem, like, you just have to go through this, this whole elaborate system of, like, clicking on things twice. And, like, the d division does the same thing. Like, why yeah. do I have to click on things two or three times just to, like, go to it? Why, if I want to invite friends, I got to go to social. And then I have to go down to the list. And then I have to double click their name. And then it opens and then, this whole yeah. other shit on the side. <clears throat> and then I have to go to invite. I, I can't press it once. I have to press it twice. Yeah. All right. So after that, instead of just clicking to just go to the next section, I have to actually press. What was it? Tab? Or I don't even remember what the button is anymore. You have to press something else to go back a layer. What you're doing, like, yeah. Why is this so complicated? Why can't oh, I just wow. click on an open uh, open slot on my friends list on my group? Open <clears> slot. <throat> click invite person. Done. Boom. Why, why do is this? Log out to log out? Why do? Why? <laughs> 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 The fact that you have to log out to log out is like so. Part of so one thing, and I realized part of the thing with division is that when you're switching, like the log out initially is going to take you to your character select screen. But at least so they could have taken a thing from division. So division, you have a different way to get to your other characters, but you still have the way to just close the game. Uh, what is it? Shift exit. You want to close? Yes. The shift escape. I mean, they could have done this. I tried this shit with division. It don't work. I just been alt F4 in that shit. I don't care. No more. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another way to do it. There's another workaround. And this is, this is, I don't know how this works on console for people. It's, 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 it's so stupid. It makes zero sense. You can, you can press slash. Uh, you can, you can press enter to go into the, the chat slash quit. And it'll actually properly quit for you. So when, so when you, for people who don't know at home, wherever it is you are, if you're on a toilet, if you're, you're at work and listening or whatever, you you can go through the interface and go to quit, and then it'll ask you if you want to quit, and then it'll bring you to the main menu. It will load as if it's reloading the entire game to go to the quit menu. Bad yeah. UI in 2019 and 2018. This is what I'm talking about. This doesn't make any sense. They got to get it together. They got to get it together. 2020 is coming up. And, and this <laughs> be like uh, the pinnacle for gaming. So they need to get that UI crap together. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah, and Devon was saying they got a red, excuse me, they cut a lot of those jobs and it's definitely showing. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. 
all these companies cutting all these jobs, EA. Just to rush a game out that we're not happy with. Mm. But they should be they should be able to see. Now, granted, Activision. F- 15 was not the most polished game. There was, well, it was fun up until a point. Final Fantasy 15? Yes. It, I liked it a lot up until a point. Up yes. until basically the end. I, I agree but, with you. I oh, well, Not the end, actually. It was like middle and end for me. But they should be able to see that from that Kingdom Hearts 3, now Borderlands 3. It, we'll, we'll, go, we'll wait for the game. Just don't put out no trash. Yeah, please. Please. Yes. Stop wasting my yes. time with this nonsense. <sighs> Seems so extra. The game's not optimized at all. Yo, it's def- Guild Wars 2 has something similar. Oh, wow. Um, we're we're going to go into our interactivity section of the, the broadcast of the uh, of the podcast broadcast. And uh, people who have questions, feel free to ask them right now. Uh, we have two questions that I wrote down on here. Uh, what upcoming story <clears throat> games are you looking forward to this year? Uh, right now, yours is Days Gone and Last of Us 2. Mm, those are definitely on the radar. For sure. Um, uh, thank you, Creative Mind, for that follow back. Um, I'm waiting for um, Cyberpunk 2017. <laughs> yes, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, these other games right here, Last of Us 2, like, I'm... I'm, Last of us, I'm yeah, yeah, no, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, I'm just hoping... You you was doing the thing on multiplayer with Last of Us 2, you and a JC Mack. We were going in. Yeah. Well, I still got that clip when we came back from the depths of hell just to win that game, though. You talk, are you talking about uh, Uncharted or Last of Us? That was definitely Uncharted. But yeah, whatever. we... Yeah, I remember... <laughs> We definitely came back from the grave on that one. I, we went off. Wow. Yo, I'm going to try to find that shit right now, actually. Hold on. That was great. That was a long time like ago. Two, it was like 2.13 or something like that. Yeah, it was bad. Two, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it was really bad. But yeah, definitely. My, my, the, my only apprehension behind Cyberpunk, um, what is it, 20, 44, 27, 7, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Is that I kind of I don't want to waste my money. So what happened? I I got Deus Ex, whatever the last Deus Ex game was. Yeah, I hadn't played really any of the other ones, but what they showed in their tech demos and stuff just looked so inviting to me. Yeah, the actual when you're actually just in the combat and shit. Yeah, but outside of that, the whole menu system and moving shit around took me out. Of, it took me out of what I wanted to be playing. So I'm hoping that Cyberpunk isn't like that. Yeah. Okay, you mean? Yeah, I'm hoping that Cyberpunk is not like Deus Ex. Yes. Right, right, right. I haven't played Deus Ex actually. I have it. Um, I gotta play it because I, I definitely like that kind of story. <laughs> well, at least not the latest one. I I did play um Human Human Revolution or whatever. That one. I have one of the more Xbox whatever that was. I have that one was good. So. I have Human Revolution on Xbox, but I don't. This uh, no disrespect to anyone who loves Xbox. I just don't like playing on it. <laughs> I'm just being real. Um, I I have one. Of, I have a half dis- the room leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I have Deus Ex on the Xbox One. Um, and I never finished it though. And I I think I actually ended up getting it on PC as well. So I do want to go through and actually play it. Because I had a lot of fun playing what I did play of it. Um, we'll see. And that that actually might be going back to what um, Black said earlier about the UIs being basically made for PC interfaces mostly. Yeah. So like just going through that menu might be something I can stomach a little bit better on a PC because it's quicker to get to and go through. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And you can like map, map the buttons the way you want them to be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna give it like I I want to get I hope I hope I hope I hope they're mindful of console players with this uh cyberpunk because the last game I think that was truly mindful of um and overall everything like all these console games overall they play well. Mm-hmm. But and I have really good vision myself, but it's just so hard to like read certain things when you have so much to read i don't like that and i feel like when you're talking about these action adventure games that's involved in reading like little um journals and, and messages and things like that i just hope they're mine that kind of stuff. right um, 
the last game to really do it well was Destiny One. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. I think God of War kind of missed the mark. They did put out a patch to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, even Spider-Man a little bit. There, but Spider-Man just didn't have, it wasn't so much reading involved in that. So it was actually good. Um, but yeah, ga a game like Cyberpunk, you could tell you're gonna, you're gonna be involved in looking at quests and, and reading things and trying to find things out. So I just hope uh, it's, it's a really good game. I mean, I'm going to wait as long as it takes. I'm going to wait as long as it takes. Same. Same. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want another anthem. <laughs> ah, yikes! <laughs> yo, 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 yikes, yikes! yikes. <laughs> yeah, that, it cut, that one slick anthem like legit hurt my feelings. Yeah, it did. It did. It really did. But you know what? I'm not even like, like, I'm mad I actually went and bought it because there were warning signs throughout like the alpha the beta like it legit gave you more it was like listen like if you the game's coming out in like a few weeks <laughs> <laughs> Man, they were they were literally putting this stuff out there like listen bro if you buy this it's on you <laughs> good because this is what you're getting all right <laughs> this is basically the game right here <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong you're not wrong um one of the other questions was if you had the choice or power to delete part of your memories which game would you guys delete just to play it again and feel that joy again that's a really good question wait what was that the question was this is from Bichetta, by the way shout out to you girl love your face uh if you guys had the choice or power to delete part of your memories which game would you delete from your memory so just so that you can feel that joy of playing through it again for the first time. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 3. That was quick. Yeah. I think my, my number one game, that's Snake Eater, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a, that was just, I, I've played through that game so many times. I would have said Metal Gear Solid 1, but, um, for the whole Psycho Mantis shit. Well, not oh, even just the psycho shit, there was but so just many things that happened. It was, yeah, but I, I think I think three because it had it had more updated uh, controls and obviously visuals and like even looking at it now to this day, like the visuals can still be impressive. Like they managed to render almost every blade of grass in that game when you're going through each environment and each area. Like you can sneak through the grass and see each like physical grass blade crazy i think mine might be mass effect too mm. that's a very good option that was that was also a phenomenal yeah. game what was that yeah, yeah. i'd say yeah i got some good games i ain't got nothing i mean i'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here and go with god of war one mm. just because they know wrong with that <laughs> i re like i remember playing that for the first time yeah and i wasn't even thinking about getting it because i i've never heard of this one and i think it was between that what have i i think what was i just playing i think i was i was pissed at some game i think i was just playing like a punisher game or something like that for the mm. ps2 yeah and and I'm i went there. to the game stop and i was like yo i need a good game he's like yo you like um the, the devil may cry type series i was like yeah you know i like i like those hack and slash type games he was like, all right, try this one. This one's supposed to be pretty good. So I was like, God of War. And I, I, I love um, Greek mythology. So I was like, all right, let me, you know, let me, let me see what this is about. And when you, when you beat that first Hydra and you go into the ship and, and you're, you're talking to Athena and you get out and you got to do the, like, if you don't know, you have to do the mini game. You'll just walk, you'll you'll see the chicks and you'll walk right out. But you look at the like, Oh <laughs> yeah. I was so surprised my mom bought me that game. I like when that part came, I was like <laughs> so I was looking at her like, oh, okay. Right. Mom, um, do you know what you just did? Like give me some titties on my screen right now. And uh so I don't know if you know this is Red M, but I'm like yeah, twelve. Cool. I'm breaking that back, all right. He's breaking that back. I'm breaking was, it back. I was kind of disappointed that they didn't do it in in like this God of War because it's been in every single one. So I was like, are they going to put a patch or is this something I don't know? He about? has a child with him now. 
Well, not only that, but it's it's a it's a different Kratos. You know, he's a, he's a lot less uh, angry, has a lot less frustrations to take out on everything. You know, so uh, with that, you don't have that same sexual frustration going on. And uh, yeah, he could listen. They could have snuck that in there, even in like the dream state. They so they missed it for like eight hours. <laughs> They could have, um, you know, I'm glad I'm honestly like as much as I, everyone here knows, I love me some titties. Um, it was a great game. Though. I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't this time no, because for sure, for sure. yeah, it, it was a different change. Well, well, dream ain't played it yet. So he don't know. I'm, we might be spoiling some of <laughs> what we're talking about. Nothing, nothing actually. Um, next what question. Game? Next question. Yes. Don't worry about it. We ain't ruining nothing for you. We ain't ruining nothing. Um, so we have some other answers in here. Uncharted Four from PyCon Fusion was one of uh, was his option. That was a great game as well. Was, I'm so close to finishing that one. How do you not finish? Oh, because Are you too busy playing good. Destiny. No. Nah, well, hold on. That was a good game. I think I was. Was I still in Arizona when I was playing Uncharted Four? I think I was. I think that might have been tour when I was getting ready to move and stuff back to I Georgia. That one again. That, but I was like on chapter 15. That one. Yeah, you're close. That one was really good. It is. Simone was whooping that ass, boy. Oh, I love me some some was that a name? Simone? Nah, you talking about um damn it. Someone with an S, ain't it? Yo, I put no Nadine, bro. Nadine. Nadine, there we go. I don't know where the fuck Simone came from. Now you Nadine. you got some love on your mind, boy. I tell you what. <laughs> <shit>. Hey. <laughs> uh yeah. Ivan says the G.I. Joe game. You gonna have to be specific. What, like like we talking like Super Nintendo G.I. Joe? Are we talking like the movie, like the the movie? Trying to erase that out of his mind completely. Oh uh, yeah, I, don't, I think he actually just trying to erase it, not so that he can relive it again, but just so he can erase. <laughs> I, I don't know. It might have been a good game. I don't know. I ain't play. I'm not gonna. I don't even know. So we were supposed to be erasing a game so that we can play it again with the same initial enjoyment that we had. Yeah. And uh, artist, my voice says Dark Souls three. Okay. Very good game. Very good game. Uh, Shit, I could throw Bloodborne in it too. All I know is, like, from when I played Bloodborne, most of my experience with Bloodborne was co-op, just because mm. I just I had a lot of friends that had it, so we just played through it. Mm -hmm. But like one of the 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 best moments, I think I I had partaken a little bit in some uh, partially, um, and like there's one section of the game like you're coming down a hill, but on top of a house there's an old dude, and I was still fucking with the controls a little bit, so I actually slapped them, like I slashed them a couple times. And he turned into like a crazy ass demon possessed werewolf. I was like, oh, <laughs> yep, I know what you're talking about. I know I what you're talking about. <laughs> you gotta get the, the f on up out of there, buddy, because that's a that's a yikes. <laughs> he was like, have you lost your mind? I was like, oh, yes, I have. I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> he said, you called it, brother. You called it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. See it. Uh, we got. Uh, uh, another option, Splinter Cell. It's another another really mm. good game. I don't know if you mean you mean Splinter Cell like the first one or like Chaos Theory because Chaos Theory for me was like probably my favorite one. Was that the one that was kind of uh, you had the option to not be as stealthy? No, that was a different one. Um, and that one you definitely needed to be stealthy or you would get shot and die. This one, it was the first time they did the aside from Pandora's thingy. I don't remember if that had co-op or not, but this was the first time it, it had like full story co-op with it. Okay. And that was just an amazing experience. I had the initial Splinter Cell and it was very fun. Mm. But at the time that came out, we were probably in eighth grade or something like that. Yeah. I did not have the patience for some of those missions. <laughs> That's Man, fair. That's fair. Some of the missions, like you really like sitting in the shadow for a while. Wait, like I don't have the patience for this anymore. I'm about to just shoot this motherfucker right now. <laughs> I have a gun. Let me use it. Yeah. Uh, so now, now my new plan is how can I shoot somebody as soon as possible? <laughs> <laughs> That's Metal Gear Solid Five for you right there. <laughs> it's like, oh, I see somebody. You know what game? Um, Assassin's Creed Two. Okay, okay, that was a really good Assassin's Creed game. In game in general. Yeah, <clears throat> Ezio Eritori. His his uh his story was. It's freaking epic. Yeah, yeah. His <laughs> his epic. swag was, was impeccable. His sister was my favorite character. Yeah. Claudia. 
Yeah. She was freaking amazing. And then she, uh, well, I don't know if anyone's played it, but um, just how she built herself throughout that trilogy was. Yeah. That was a really good game. Mm hmm. I agree. Uh, Persona 4 from Kesa saying, okay. Persona, I never played Persona 4. I also still haven't played 5. I have it, and I'm going to get to it. Just haven't done it yet. Um, you have a lot of games to play, man. Bruh. Yo, my backlog is ridiculous. Bruh, if I could show you what my backlog looks like right now. And the thing is, I got PC, so I know y'all is ridiculous. Like, PS4 is, you could get a ridiculous backlog on PS4, but PC, I know it's worse. Yeah, because I just subscribed to Humble Bundle so that I can, like, have more games to give away to people um, throughout streams. And uh, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Uh, Skyrim, <laughs> yo. Oh, Skyrim. Skyrim. Yes. I'm going to tell you, Divine does not help with that because she's always telling me, oh, this game is on having a great sale right now. I'll be like, huh? What's... Uh, do I want to get it? Freaking sales. Yes. Kingdom Hearts 2? Yeah, yeah. Another question. Is there a game you want a sequel to that you have no idea that you have an idea of how the story should go? I, I have mean, a bunch. We could probably erase... Metal, uh, not Metal Gear. We could probably erase Andromeda, maybe even three, and just make a new three for Mass Effect. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say this about three. Almost everything was Gucci about three, except for the ending. Like, in my in my opinion, three was dope. Three was dope, except for the end. This is very true. Yeah. So maybe just maybe just tweak the ending. Tweak the ending. You know, uh, it, three like three was the first time you know I played. What? Happy ending though. Or y'all just, yeah, just mad that yeah, I made those decisions and that. It didn't matter which decision you made, really. That's yeah. when, he, when he was talking about games not really honoring the decision that you made, that was the first thing that popped up to my head, really. Mm. Yeah. There were a lot of scenarios in that game where it was just like, oh, you might have selected this, but we don't give a shit right now because we're going to do this instead. Someone got to go. You know what? Listen. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The last... Um, what was it? Um, Walking Dead season one does the same thing. In a way, yes. In a way, what no. Do you mean? Some of Yo, the characters end up living. I'm talking about the end of Walking Dead season one. Yeah. When you, the start of episode five, when you have to make a decision, and you go, and yes, you feel like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, Bro, I did that. That 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 actually did bother me about that. That did. Like I did that. That. I don't know. I don't know if you start getting symptoms earlier or later, depending on if you do it or not. I don't know if that's the case, but it, it, um, you get it later. Okay. You're just you're just handicapped. But you're that. Handicapped. that but I mean, to be fair though, that does change a, quite a bit of the interactions that you end up having. Having, right? Like you still get the same ending. You still get the same ending, but it still changes how that ending happens or like how you get there. I guess. I, I don't want to waste because that like season one was phenomenal. Was yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I teared. Bro, I, I ugly <laughs> cried. I, I wasn't even just a tear. It was like a. Like, you, like they, they actually transition and make you do that. Yeah. Well, I guess you don't have to. Like you have a choice, but I did it. I said, you know, what? I don't want you. I don't. Anyway, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that. So one of the other questions from Ivan, he said, um, uh, I lost it now. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. So which game would you like a sequel to, and how would it go? I would say, I just had a game on in mind, and I totally forgot what it was going to be. It would be Metal Gear Solid Six. And it would be with Kojima, and it would be a continuation of exactly what happened after Metal Gear Solid Five, but it would basically bring you full circle towards the very begin, the very first Metal Gear, not even Metal Gear Solid, but Metal Gear, when you play as Solid Snake. So like transition from Big Boss to Solid Snake, and then like go through the training and then like go on your first, very first mission. Like I want to, I want to bridge that gap and I want that to be a thing real bad. It's all about bridging them gaps. Mm hmm. Filling the gaps. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Huzzah! 
You only have a game, but you haven't played it yet? Oh, yeah. Wait, which? Fable 2 and Mirror's Edge? Okay, yeah, yeah. No, no, someone was saying um, Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones, uh, they had a Telltale game. Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, I think it was like between season 4 and season 5. I was actually thinking about streaming it, but... You might as well. What you call it comes out next week, so I don't know if I'm happy. Uh, Schwamp, to answer your question about, he said if they they make Game of Thrones into a game with game changing options, would I, would we play it? My answer is no. If it's a Telltale type of game, no. I just don't. I don't particularly like those. They just haven't grasped me yet. Mm. So that would be my answer. Wait, oh man. If it's like that, if they haven't grasped you yet, then I don't know if there's anything I can tell you. But exactly, yeah. it's just not my thing. I've watched a few people play. That's something like that I can watch. Like that's mm. I don't mind watching it. Okay. When fair. I'm doing some other stuff, like I'll cut it on while someone else is playing it, but that isn't, I don't like to play that kind of stuff. That's fair. That's fair. I, I will say for sure that Walking Dead and like Wolf Among Us, both of those Wolf games. Wolf Among Us was really good. So, so, like the storytelling in that was so amazing. Really, really good. You would love a Bloodborne sequel? Yo, I feel that. I think we might be getting one. I feel like we are going to. Bloodborne? Yeah. No, no, no. I guess what we thought we were going to get in Bloodborne was, was actually Sekiro, Sekiro right? Yeah. 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 I, I, I feel like, I don't know, actually. I kind of would want a, more, a Sekiro more, another Sekiro more than another Bloodborne right now. The way Bloodborne ended, though. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about story. Mm-hmm. I feel like it would just be a, would it be a continuation or just be a complete story if it was Bloodborne? I feel like it would definitely be a continuation, but detached in a sense where like what what from software ends up doing is like they'll detach it from it up until a point. And then you're like, oh, this is this is a reference to the first one or a second one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if y'all have Arkham Knight. I I wasted my money on them damn Arkham games. What? Arkham Knight was pretty good. (laughs) Arkham Knight had a lot of issues, but like what? Where do we where do we begin? The Batmobile segments, the required Batmobile segments. There were far, far too many of them. Shut up! What the? Mm-hmm. What was that? <laughs> that wasn't even nothing. The Batman games have been phenomenal, except for I don't think Arkham Knight was that great, and so I. The Batmobile segments, that was part of it. Um, the other thing was the Arkham Knight himself. Um, well, that's another one of those reimaginings. It's a reimagining. It, it, what bothers me the most, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't gotten there, by the way. What bothers me the most about the Arkham Knight is that they said that he's a totally new character, that he's never been introduced to the series before. And then it just ended up being. Well, he was never introduced to the series. Well, introduce in general, like he's they said he's an entirely okay. new character, like okay. in general and like technically because he has a different costume. Yeah, but it's the same f-ing person. So like yeah. y'all y'all just like y'all just straight up lying about that. <laughs> that was just a bold faced um, lie. I like I like the, the combat where you where you paired up with like you yeah. know, the Robin. And- the combat was phenomenal. Combat was always great. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And I like the costumes on this one, on on that one. Same. Um, I would I would do a maybe a spinoff, like just the family, like maybe just a Nightwing or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or even Red Red uh, Red Hood, yeah. where you like you get to like kill people. That'd be kind of dope. <laughs> That'd be kind of dope. Yeah, because DC allows that. Yeah. Um, y'all played. I, I've played plenty of For Honor. Yes, the a For Honor two would be good. I've actually streamed For Honor many times on the channel, but I don't want to hold you guys up. I know, right? I don't want to hold you guys up too too long. I know you have other things you have to do throughout the night and throughout the day. It's like four now. Um, first of all, everyone who's in chat right now, who's watching the stream, thank you all so much for being here. It really does mean a lot to us that y'all are listening in on this and joining in on the conversation. We're going to talk more about this uh, throughout the rest of today uh, in regular streaming. But uh, for those of you, say that again. I'll be in your chat. Hey, for those of you who do not already know, my guests today are the audio lover, 
and Dream Manifested. Tell us once again, starting with you, Dream, where people can go to find more of you. Well, you can find me in the many avenues. If you'd like to just come kick it with me as we play some games, a lot of shooters, a lot of Destiny. And, you know, so funny, I'll play, I'm, I'm a variety streamer. I play different things. You let me know what you want to see. That is www.twitch.tv backslash Dream Manifested. If you want to just be current with anything that I might be doing in terms of photography, um, that'll just be Instagram, either dreams, dream, uh, dream manifest. You can just start with dream manifest it, and then you can find the link to my actual photography page there. And then as far as music, we might have a SoundCloud coming soon. Just saying. Get ready for the summer. Ooh, ooh Get ready for the summer. <laughs> Hold on, Divine. Love the dream manifest the tape about the drop. You know? Executive produced by Black Only. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this way we can do voices of Imagine. all these other characters and not have to pay them. We just have Will do it. We don't have to get we don't have to get a bomber. We got Will right there. Come on now. Shit. We can't call him Obama though. Uh, attention we'll call him. viewers. <laughs> I do believe that it is our solemnly sworn duty to deliver you more anime titties that is all <laughs> y'all should why y'all watching us right now yeah we some damn fools y'all should <laughs> um but yeah uh what about you audio level where can people go to get more of you um, like I said, uh, I just started YouTubing. Um, so you can anywhere is going to be the audio lover. Um, so that's uh, Twitter at the audio lover, Instagram at the audio lover. Um, all one word, no underscores, no none of that stuff. Um, Twitch at the audio lover. Um, and then the audio lover.com if you want to go directly to my YouTube. Um, I'll be doing weekly uh, videos about futuristic things such as uh, AI and and everything of that nature. So, yo, what's your tagline? <sighs> I can't say that yet. Wait, oh, <laughs> you can't hit us with the info. <laughs> Don't make us wait. I see how it is. Oh yeah. I gotta get a trademark, man. Okay. Jaffia, okay. Jaffia, 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 Jaffia. And for anyone who's listening instead of watching right now, you might not know where to go to to see my stuff. So I will let you know right here. Everything is Black Oni except for YouTube because somebody took Black Oni before I could. And uh, I'm just Will Wiggins on there. So just go there to find me if you want to. But other than that, if you just go to BlackOni.com or if you go to my Twitter uh, at BlackOni, there's a link tree link that has links to like all my stuff. So go there. Super easy, super simple. You can get uh, access to all that stuff. And I will be playing some more games after our podcast ends, which will be in just a few moments. But the average black. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you everyone for listening in. Um, I, we will be right back. Uh, le- gentlemen, always a pleasure. We'll be doing this. Uh, for sure. I do want to say one thing before I go. Um, I would be remiss. Um, this past week, um, in the hip hop community, we did lose a legend. Um, I was, I was a major fan of him. So I honestly, I would be remiss if I, if I didn't say nothing, um, R.I.P. to Nipsey Hussle. He he was trying to do a lot for the community um, in L.A. as well as everywhere else. Um, he was even coming down to South Florida and doing some things down here as well. Um, so yeah, it, that that just really hurt for the hip hop community that we lost someone like that who was really um, changed their life to try to make a positive impact. Mm-hmm. I yes to everything you just said. I I am not familiar with his music. Um, but I heard about what his impact has been throughout the industry and especially to the youth. And it does really suck to lose someone who had that kind of positive influence on people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just, just to 
try to change your life around like that mm-hmm. from a negative circumstance to, to really go into a positive light. And that's how your demise happens. But, um, you know, you just stay positive and, and keep doing what you do. All right, y'all. And that is it for the Black Oni Podcast, episode 79. Thank you all so much. We'll speak with you again real soon.